So one thing you can do uh, is if you take two fairings and point them towards each other. So let me take my payload out and I'm going to delete the fairing. This other fairing is just a just a fancy nose column. Um, so let's say that I've got this and I've got the inner stage nodes turned on and then I take another fairing and I can flip it around and then I can connect it the two inner stage nodes together um, and I can put it as close as I want based on the inner stage nodes or I could shift it um, and then right click to undo that fairing because I want to build the fairing from this side um, and this stru truss structure, it doesn't actually um, do anything. It's pure graphics, and you can just turn it off. But what's going to look kind of odd is your craft is going to, you know, have um, oh man, it doesn't want to take it apart. Oh, that's why I was trying to build the fairing. So your craft, after it releases this payload, is going to look like this. It'll be connected, and it just will look strange. So I leave it on. And you could actually shift it a little bit more if you want a little extra room in your payload. If you do it too much, it's going to look kind of weird. Or it's going to do something strange like that. Why is it doing that? You can hold shift when you when you do this and it'll let you do it in infinitely. But it's kinda cheaty. So that's good enough. Uh, maybe a little closer. Alright. And then you can put your payload in there. Why that comes apart, I don't know. And I would, and you notice I have a coupler decoupler on it already. So if I put it like, for example, here, when I deploy my fairing, it will stay connected. You have to have a decoupler or a docking port or something on whatever it is you want to remove, or else it will be stuck. So I've actually got plenty of room to put other stuff. Um, and I would also recommend uh, in your front fairing here putting, uh, I, I should do away with the service space. Service space generate a lot of drag. I don't know why they generate so much more drag than other things, um, but they do. And I would just take everything out of here and put it in there. And pay attention to um, the heat tolerance, because for example, this guy is only 1200, whereas a lot of this other stuff, like your batteries and your stabilizers, are 2000. And since this is going to generate heat and conduct it, I would put the things that first that can tolerate 2000 and then put the probe last. So I would do like batteries, stabilizers, and then probe because the heat is going to move through those first and dissipate. Um, and so then we'll build our fairing. And we're going to be very, I'm going to move my mouse way out here so I have a lot of control because I want to be as skinny as possible. And I need that much more so I'm going to just do that right there. And then we should be able to close it right here if the wings don't get in the, the wings, I might have to move the wings. Yep, so sometimes it's hard to close these because other things are getting in the way. So we're going to cancel all this. And we're just going to shift these wings forward a little bit. And that'll move. Oh, you know what? I bet it's the wheel, actually. The wheel is getting in the way. And we can shift it back afterwards.
actually I have a button I can hold on my mouse that lowers my DPI a lot so that I can move the mouse in fine increments. There we go. It turns blue and says close fairing. And there we have a nice smooth fairing for our payload. And we made sure that wherever it's connected on the interstage node, and you have to be careful when you're doing this because you could accidentally connect it at the other end to this stage node instead of this node. So, but I made sure it's nice and flush there. And then when we get to orbit, we can decouple it from there. Because remember, deploying the fairing does not decouple your uh, payload. Um, so this is this is really nice uh, way to get some payloads to orbit for pretty cheap. Um, if you ended up with something too heavy to get to orbit, you could just empty the fuel out and then have another SSTO that's dedicated to bringing fuel up to bring the rest of the fuel that it needs up. And it'll still probably be cheaper. Those two trips will probably still be cheaper than building a rocket uh, that you wouldn't be able to recover. One of the reasons that I like uh, this uh, using these two fairings facing each other is since I can put my cargo in the middle here I have my wings and engines and wheel out in front if I try to put this on top it's going to generate a lot of drag I'm going to end up with a bigger craft than I really need um, and it's going to be harder to fly if I put it out in front it's going to be difficult to fly either during the ascent during, or during the descent. I'll either end up with too many wings on the front to hold that up, or uh, and then when I return, I'll actually have too much lift in the front once I've released the payload. So this makes it easier to balance. And we can actually check that it's stable. Uh, so um, the green line is when it's full of fuel, it's nice and stable. Um, you know, if I pitch up, this is, it's going to force itself back down and vice versa um, and I've got my um, level flight line pretty close I could tweak that a little bit um, and the one thing you want to do though is you want to remove your payload and delete your fairing and then update and you see it's very different now it's saying the fuel craft is very unstable well yeah because we have a whole lot of weight in the back and a lot of drag here and drag here. Um, we don't care about that because we're not going to be ascending with full fuel without our payload and without our fairing. Um, so we're just looking at the yellow line and we can see, and I'm going to switch it back to 90, uh, we can see that the yellow line doesn't dip above or below in the wrong places. It's nice angle it's above all on this side and below on this side so all we're looking at is the yellow line we deleted our fairing we're basically put our craft in the configuration it would be on a return trip and I don't have to empty the fuel out because this yellow line is assuming the fuel is empty I might have a little bit of liquid fuel left which is going to change things but I can always move that forward or backwards between the front and back engines uh, to balance the craft on the return. I might, I would probably move it to the front engines to make it more stable on return. Um, and don't forget, you can also deploy your air brakes. I'll have some up here. Just to see how that changes things. And it makes it slightly more stable. So if you have something that's not very stable, you might be able to find that putting the, the air brakes on there will fix it. And it will act, you notice that as they're closing, it adjusts it. Um, and then we also want to look at the yaw. yaw. The yellow line on the yaw is good as well. Um, and so that's really why I really like this configuration. Um, and I could fit more stuff in here. Um, and it's, it's easy on the return trip and the, and the going trip. The one thing is when you're landing, you're going to probably need a little bit of throttle because this isn't going to generate enough lift at very low speeds to do a soft landing. You want to land with a little bit of throttle to keep your speed up until you touch down. And of course, one other thing I forgot to mention is that you can have really, really fat um, cargo here. If I made a much larger SSTO with the larger engines and the larger fairing, 
um, you know, I could put something in here, uh, assuming, you know, let's say we had the larger tank. Let's say we built something with the larger tank. Let's assume that all of this was this larger tank. You know, not only can I put something pretty big in here, I could make something that's really, really wide, you know, um, and put it in a, in a smooth fairing. You know, I would obviously smooth it out more. Um, there's limitations on how big this thing can be. Um, I'm actually not sure how big these things can get, how long they can get. That's what I'm really curious about. Well, I'm sorry. That's not the limitation. The limitation is this trash structure. Uh, so you're not you're not limited like other cargo, like the standard cargo hold of how wide something can be. Is it larger than this one? One way we can find out. It is. It is longer. So you can see where its center stage nodes are. You can see its center stage nodes end right about there. Let me get some somewhere. Right about there. So we've got a good bit more. Sp we've almost got a whole 50% more length to deal with. And of course, you know, both of these allow something much wider. And, you know, between, I mean, look at your payloads. You're, you have an MK2 cargo hold, which is tiny. And the only thing bigger than that is the MK3. So you've got to build something as big as an MK3. So these are nice in between cargo holds, is putting these face together, either this, the medium size one or this one. I mean, even this one would probably be better than this, you know, personally, in my opinion. 